Hey guys, it is time for another nerdy video. Today I want to talk about ATR. I haven't talked about it since like two years ago or so when I first uh, introduced it and uh, a lot of new people have joined the best community and uh, there seems to be a lot of confusion about it. But the idea is to adjust the board to changing terrain. So as you go down the hill, we lift the tail, we go up a hill, we lift the nose. And you can see that happening right now. I'm going down a pretty steep hill, which is pretty much near tail drag territory on a future motion board. And I can go down it, still talk comfortably and not be stressed out because I know that I have plenty of stopping power. I can stop at any moment. Now, how does it work? It basically tries to measure the acceleration that you're experiencing and it's comparing it to the expected acceleration. So if you're, for example, putting in 20 amps of current, you expect a certain amount of acceleration. But if that amount is, if the actual acceleration is different, if it's lower, then it means that you must be facing extra resistance, like going up a hill, then we lift the nose. If it is higher, if you're accelerating faster than expected, then we must be going downhill. So we lift the tail. And that's all it is. What's really cool about it is that it allows you to have this hill performance without really affecting street riding. When you're riding on flat pavement, then you don't experience that same effect and you can still nose drag, you can tilt, you can have a really soft board on streets and then still have all this climbing power on hills. And this is one of the main differences to torque tilt. Torque tilt was what came first, essentially. Here, by the way, is the steepest section. If I go down this here with speed, like I did in that other video that my son filmed with the drone, then my tail was dragging. And I can get into more details on what setting. Ooh, my tail just touched a little bit. So here I accelerated a bit more than I really wanted to. Anyway, torque tilt happens to be what we started with. Torque tilt is even simpler than ATR. It just looks at current, and the higher the current, the more it lifts the nose or the tail, depending on whether it's braking current or acceleration current. And uh, that works really well on a consistent hill like this one right here, where I'm going at a constant speed. Torque tilt would have also allowed me to do the same thing. The problem is that because it only looks at amps, it will do the same thing even when you're accelerating or braking on a flat road. And uh, that basically makes the board kind of unpleasant to ride. It makes it feel too aggressive and um, that's why we didn't like it. But the other reason is that it actually doesn't work as well on hills when you're doing things like I'm doing right now when I'm pumping. Lifting that nose occasionally will reduce the amps temporarily and torque tilt would now go down. So I would nose that I wouldn't be able to like do what I'm doing right now. I don't know if it's visible in the video, but this kind of pumping can only be done if you're looking at acceleration as opposed to just amps. And um, yeah, so that is basically the key difference. Now, what are some of the downsides of the ATR? It turns out I broke my microphone because I was death gripping the, the phone because it is kind of steep here. And, um, oh shit, what was that? Oh, uh, that engaged the board. As you can see, it is steep. All right, wish me luck. Joel! 
Oh. Oh. All right, all right, all right. It is working. Okay, so uh, I have to hold my phone closer now. Um, hopefully, wind noise is not too bad. But yeah, so what are some of the downsides of ATR? The main thing, at least to me, is you can't really use it in terrain where it changes very quickly. So if you have like BMX pump track where you go up and down and up and down, then you will see that the lingering nose tilt that you get, which is one of the big pluses on like longer uphills, that works against you when you're hitting the top of a bump and uh, now you have that nose up and for about a second or so that will cause a nasty tail drag on the way down and uh, the same happens the other way around if you're going down a steep incline followed directly by a steep uphill then the same thing happens in reverse your nose is pointing down and you can't lift it without slowing all the way down basically and uh, so that's why for pump tracks you don't really want to enable ATR at all and the same is true for uh, any trails where things go quickly up and down and especially if you're trying to race it and if you're trying to do it as fast as possible that can be challenging so um, now we're going up this uh, really steep hill again and this here I did crank up the ATR a tiny bit it's now at 1.6 but this trail is I would say probably even steeper than Max's hill but it certainly is longer because I'm overheating already oh. all right um, so yeah and then another downside is that oh, uh, MOSFETs at 80 yeah another downside is if the resistance is not due to a hill but due to for example strong headwind or grass or mud or anything like that soft sand you will also experience ATR if you're accelerating and trying to maintain speed you won't even feel it as a negative thing but as soon as you let go and you're like trying to coast or slow down you will notice that your nose is unnaturally high and that might feel a little awkward so yeah that is not ideal but for riding trails it's pretty much the best thing that you can have so now i want to address one question that's been coming up and that is should future motion also adopt atr my answer to that is they already have it They've had it all along and just because you know, it doesn't feel quite the same doesn't mean that they don't have it and the proof of that is basically when the board is level you have about 20 to 22 degrees of clearance however you can easily ride up grades or go down grades that are steeper than that so um, how would that be possible if they weren't also adjusting their board behavior to the terrain? And that's why I believe they've had it in the XR, you can even feel it in the Plus and the Pint. But obviously in the GTS you can feel it the most because the GTS is so much more powerful that um, basically all the trails that I ride I can almost all of them I can make it up on the GTS so I can feel the board adjusting to the terrain and um, so the main difference to what we have is they don't have it exposed in custom shaping yet that means you can't tweak it you can't customize it to your own liking and um, they have in general just less torque available which means that it's you know you can't make it quite as extreme but the reality is that they actually do it really well and they have something like ATR but they do it in such a subtle way that it's barely noticeable in my opinion they've done an excellent job 
at implementing something like ATR. Anyone who says that uh, Future Motion doesn't have ATR, they just don't realize that it's there because it's so smooth, so well implemented, that it just feels natural and you don't even notice it. But um, those are usually the best features, the ones that you don't know are there. Regarding the GTS, for riders of medium to light weight, like I'm 160, 165 pounds, and the ride is pretty amazing. It, it can handle almost all any terrain. For heavier riders, you run into torque limitations before you run into limitations of ATR. Only lighter riders, they will basically scrape the nose before they run out of torque. And for lighter riders, a, a slightly stronger ATR would make their board, the future motion boards more capable. But um, all in all, I think you know, they, they maybe provided that as a custom shaping option then they could make it pretty much as capable as we have it on the vests. And um, obviously torque limitations are a different story. So that's all I got. And uh, yeah, in the next video that I really wanna make, I wanna cover how to configure ATR. So talk to you guys next time.